uh, further indictments. I think indictments the January 6th thing is pretty bad. Well, the January 6th thing is bad, but also the intelligence agencies were involved in provoking people to go into the Capitol building. That's a fact. Do you, so wait a minute. You're, you're saying that that guy, what's his name? Ray Epps. Yeah, you really think that he I don't was, know. I don't know, but I do know that I every that's other... I think apparent. I think he's going to sue F- Fox. I think every other person who was involved in January 6th, who was involved in coordinating uh, a break-in into the Capitol and in instigating people breaking, they were all arrested. This guy wasn't. Not only that, they were defending him in the New York Times, the Washington Post, all these different things, because saying that Fox News is unjustly accused him of instigating. Well, he clearly instigated. He did it on camera. I don't know if he was a Fed. I know a lot of people think he was a Fed. The people that were there were calling him a Fed. What I do know is when they asked the FBI, the FBI said, we can't tell you whether or not there were people that were there that were doing that. Now, there's been reports that there was hundreds of agents that were there that were doing that. I don't know if that's true either. But I do know that they do use agent provocateurs to disrupt peaceful protests. It's a a common tactic. What they do is say if there's a, um, like the World Trade Organization is a great example. And that was in, I think, the 90s in Seattle. And so what they did was they were protesting the World Trade Organization. They were doing it peacefully. It was a big problem. So what they did is they sent in, allegedly, Asian provocateurs. They started smashing buildings and lighting things on fire. Now it's not a peaceful protest. Now they could bring in the police. Now they can start arresting people. And then they created a no-protest zone where literally if you had a pin on your jacket that was the WTO with a red line through it, they would not let you cross. You could not cross with a pin that was against the WTO and, and go to work. There was a no protest zone. So they, they, they silenced protest, which is right. a part of our freedom of speech. So this is a tactic that some government agencies uh, use okay, to stop okay, but, but peaceful wait a minute. protest. All right. So what you're saying is on January 6th, that uh, this event that obviously... Trump organized. Forget about the Giuliani stuff and the, uh, you know, whether they thought that it was. He definitely stolen. encouraged people to protest. Yes. But all right. So you're saying that like the the FBI and Nancy Pelosi and, and I'm, I'm not saying to, Nancy Pelosi. No, no, but like you're saying that like they're like, you know, we'll make this uh, instead of uh, an awkward protest, we'll encourage it. So that it'll be, it'll backfire on Trump rather than being this rising of people that uh, believe that there was election corruption. I think it's certainly possible. I think that would be hard. You think it's possible? I think it's possible. You don't think it's, wait a minute, you think it's hard to do? I think that, you know, that the FBI or the CIA saying, hey, you know, Trump lost this election, because here's what you're kind of implying. Trump lost the election. He is such a, a an amazing communicator, and he's convinced this loyal base that there was election interference. We don't want them to protest. How we can end this is if we encourage th- people to go beyond protesting to uh, essentially go into the Capitol and take a shit in the hallway. I mean, I'm exaggerating right. a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I don't see why that would be of use. Like, I'm more suspicious why Trump didn't call for backup when, you know, or, you know, for uh, the, for the Capitol Police. You know what I mean? It's like there was... And that like Michael Flynn's brother was, you know, what I mean, like there's there's way more conspiracy stuff against Trump. And, you know, then I think the the slim likelihood that people were like, oh, Trump's a problem. Let's just get these people that are loyal to Trump to run into the Capitol so that we can arrest 300 people. Does that make sense? No. No, it doesn't no. make sense. No, I think it's a standard tactic, especially when someone is the enemy of the intelligence agencies. With Trump, 
that's absolutely the case. Trump set himself up against the intelligence agencies. He did it openly and he did it brazenly. And a, a lot of people think it's very dangerous. Like he, the intelligence agencies are very important. You know, you want to find out what's going on in other countries. You want to find out what the threats to America are. You want to find out what terrorist activities are going to be taking place and stop them before. And, you know, JFK you, had his problem with the intelligence yeah, agencies. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, look, it's unchecked power, right? It's That's the deep state. It's unchecked power. And I think Trump was very open about his disdain for the intelligence agencies. He created enemies in the intelligence agencies. It's standard for intelligence agencies in this country to encourage agent provocateurs or to employ agent provocateurs. And so you're saying when he was in Helsinki and he was saying, I believe Putin more than my intelligence community, that was something the intelligence community was like, we're going to get him. Well, I think they were going to get him in any way that they could because he's an enemy of the intelligence agencies. And he was openly talking about them being incompetent and being corrupt. And, he, you know, he fired Comey and, you know, he was against the FBI. And, you know, look, it's a very dangerous thing. You talk to people that are in intelligence agencies, like it's a very dangerous thing for a president to be at war with the intelligence agencies and to do it so publicly. And I think... It's with without a doubt when you have a gigantic, massive protest that a lot of people think is a threat to democracy. You have these people that are saying the election was rigged and they're on the Capitol lawn, they're screaming and yelling. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they would encourage people to do things that were unlawful instead of peacefully protesting, which is what everybody was doing on the outside, which is totally legal to take that and escalate it to entering into the Capitol. Now you can lock things down, and now you have real clear evidence that this president is responsible for this insurrection attempt, and this is dangerous, this is a threat to our democracy, and he's never going to be president again, we're going to indict him, we're going to go after him, we're going to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. I think it's not, it's not like, it's, there's a lot of shenanigans going on on both sides. It's not like a clear cut, like he shouldn't have done that and they should have done this. It's like there's a lot of fuckery and there's a lot that's been going on throughout history. Whenever people have unchecked power and unchecked influence and they, have, and they have enemies and Trump was their enemy.